math is an important part of deep learning. And when you first venture into deep learning, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and confused. Over the last few years, I have been learning the math concepts in deep learning on my own. And I can tell you that it's very easy to lose track and a sense of purpose. So I want to quickly share with you the most important math concepts that you need to learn and how these concepts apply to deep learning. First and foremost, you need to understand that depending on how you want to apply deep learning, you may need to learn a few more concepts. Just have an open mind about that. And also initially, I highly recommend that you get a broad understanding of these concepts before you go deeper into the equations and using real numbers. This will help you so that you don't get overwhelmed. So the first set of concepts you need to learn involve linear algebra. This is very important because remember machines or computers learn only through numbers. Unlike us, they cannot understand images, text, or any other type of data. They all need to be transformed into numbers. So this involves representing data as vectors or matrices or tensors. Tensors are simply three-dimensional set of numbers that look similar like a matrix, but you've got the third dimension. In linear algebra, you need to learn about different types of matrix operations. This includes things like matrix multiplication, dot product, transpose, inverse, norms. These are just different ways how you can play with the data and get it into a form where a computer can understand. These concepts are also fundamental to how a neural network actually learns. And remember, I say neural network because at the end of the day, the backbone of deep learning is neural network. And this type of representation of data is also very important for one particular reason, which I will talk about towards the end of the video. And you can think of it in terms of how deep learning really took off with the implementation with GPUs. And I'll talk about this a little bit later, but ultimately these concepts in linear algebra is what's responsible for that. The next set of math concepts that you need to learn revolve around calculus. Calculus involves derivatives, partial derivatives, how does the chain rule work, and most importantly, you need to understand gradient descent. Think of calculus here as the key ingredient that's responsible for a neural network or a deep learning model to actually learn. So these concepts are used to learn from the data and update the weights in the neural network. That way, in the next pass, your model is more accurate. Believe me, these concepts seem complicated, but in reality, they are not. And if you want to learn these concepts intuitively, you should try the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant is a hands-on learning app designed for deep understanding. Unlike passive lecture videos, its hands-on approach proven to be six times more impactful helps you build knowledge from the ground up through problem solving. The platform combines challenging exercises, motivational features, and friendly competition to keep you progressing. All content is developed by an award-winning team of educators from MIT, Stanford, and Caltech, as well as tech companies like Google and Microsoft. It helps you learn every day for both professional and personal growth. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in just a few minutes a day. It's also got a comprehensive range of math courses for learners of any level level, whether you want to brush up on fundamentals or challenge yourself with advanced concepts, Brilliant helps you enhance your visual and spatial problem solving skills and lets you focus on the essentials that highlight the most useful math concepts. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash chemcoder or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off and annual premium subscription. Thank you, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the video. Talking about calculus, you should also get familiar with the term called activation functions. There are many different types of functions. Ultimately, the goal here is that these functions need to be differentiable, which means that they need to be some form of a continuous function that your model will use to actually learn from the data. So as a quick recap here, learn how to do differentiation, what are partial derivatives, and try to understand the concept of the chain rule and how it applies to backpropagation, and also understand how a gradient is calculated and how that gradient can be used in a gradient descent algorithm 
to update the weights of a neural network. That is all you need with calculus. The next set of concepts involves a little bit more than just operating a neural network and representing data. It's more intuitive. It's something that makes you think a little bit more and also assess if your model is really doing well. So these concepts are centered around probability and statistics. Remember, our models predict based off of probabilities. So concepts here will help you understand how confident is the model. In order to understand that, you need to understand the concepts of a loss function. Like, for example, how do you measure the correctness of your model? And I know what I'm saying here is really vague, but that's essentially what it it is. There are so many ways in which you can calculate how different your model prediction is versus what the ground truth of the data is. For example, you have an image of an apple and your model says maybe it's an orange, so since everything is in terms of numbers, how confident is the model when it says an image of an apple is actually an orange? For example, your model might say, I'm 51% sure this is orange, but I'm 49% percent sure that it's an apple. So how do you get to that number? That goes back to the concepts of loss function. There are many different loss functions depending on the type of data and depending on the task at hand. There are several different loss functions that you can use. Then comes probability distributions. There are many types of probability distributions like Gaussian distribution, Bernoulli's distribution, and so on. So try to understand what these distributions mean, because at the end of the day, your data is what dictates the performance of the models, assuming everything else is optimized pretty well with hyperparameter tuning. So probability distributions actually tell a story about your data. How is your data distributed? What is the mean of the data? What is the variance of the data? What's the standard deviation? Things of that nature. And then if you're trying to get into Bayesian neural networks, you need to know the Bayes theorem. And then also if you're trying to get into variational autoencoders, in a lot of cases, people use Bayes theorem to optimize the variational autoencoders. So try to learn about these concepts. Then you have to think in terms of sampling the data, discrete sampling versus continuous sampling. And specifically talking about variational autoencoders, you've got to know what is the KL divergence, how it's calculated, what it means. And then there's the usual stuff like the performance metrics for your model accuracy, precision, F1 score, and so on. These are basically different statistical ideas that represents the performance of your model. And another aspect is it will help you carry out some data analysis right off the bat, even before you train any machine learning or deep learning models. Then comes the math concepts behind optimizing your deep learning model. And this starts with different flavors of gradient descent, for example, things like the atom optimizer, and then you've got the stochastic gradient descent. First, learn about what gradient descent is, and then try to learn about these different flavors of gradient descent and where it's used, why it's used, why one is preferred over the other. After that, like I said, when you learn about different loss functions, also make sure you learn why these loss functions are used and where it's better to use a certain type of loss function, for example, mean squared error versus cross entropy loss function, where it's beneficial and things of that nature. And then also learn about some of the hyperparameters that you will be dealing with, things like the learning rate, the regularization parameter. Just to give you an overview, the learning rate is responsible for how long your model takes to actually learn something and attain the best possible accuracy whereas the regularization parameter actually makes your model more generalizable to new unseen data. So these are the things that you will have to start paying attention to to get the best out of your deep learning model. Then there's also math concepts specific to where and how you want to apply these models. And that relates to, for example, with image processing, you'll have to think in terms of convolutional neural networks. How does a convolutional layer work? What's the kernel size? And you know, things of that nature. And then you've got some concepts when you look at audio processing or signal processing, you're thinking of different ways of smoothening the signal, removing the noise, denoising techniques. I know that these are not like 
math heavy concepts, a lot of times these are just something that you can code into your algorithm and then don't really have to worry about it, but it's always good to know. And then if you're going more into information theory, you should also think in terms of graph convolutional networks, how data can be represented as a graph and how you can use a combination of graph and convolutional layers to build a deep learning model that can actually do something. And the last bit as a beginner to deep learning, I highly advise you to learn and this is something that I mentioned early on with linear algebra is what led to all of these advancements in deep learning, because a lot of these math concepts were already there decades ago, but now they're really taking shape with full force with the discovery of high speed operations on the GPUs. And this is a very important concept in deep learning and it's called vectorization. It's also there in neural networks if you're building a simple neural network. But remember, vectorization is what led to a major shift and not just vectorization on its own, but also how you can use vectorization to speed up the learning on the GPUs. That's what's led to the advancement of deep learning. So understanding these fundamental concepts will help you get a broader view and an, a very solid understanding of how these models work. That way you never have to worry about learning a new concept. So with all those concepts listed, it is now up to you to take it forward, learn one concept at a time, don't get deviated, find an application that really sparks a fire in you and and go after every math concept involved and come back here and let me know how things are going and whether or not this video helped you or share it with someone who's learning deep learning just like you and may need a little bit more exposure into what concepts to learn, etc. And in the meantime, if you're looking for a structure in terms of turning data into models, I highly recommend that you watch this video right here. I present a complete workflow that you need to keep in mind when building machine learning models. With that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.